And let's go to my Twitch. Okay, let's see if I can hear you now. It doesn't look like it's coming through. No. Let me see. Wait, wait, wait. I'm not sure. Let me see. Wait, 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 wait. I'm not sure. Let me see. Wait, 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 wait. I'm not sure. Let me see. How about it? Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Wait a minute. Um, I, I think I got some audio from you. Okay. Uh, I'll, let me I'll, uh, some audio give a little you. bit more chitter chatter. Okay. Uh, I'll, let me I'll, uh, a test some audio give a little bit more chitter chatter. Is okay? Uh, we're yep. getting it. We're getting it. All right. Hey. <laughs> oh my gosh. <clears throat> Technology. Oh, we, try, we tried streaming on Instagram. It didn't work. Uh, it, it, it worked, but Jeff's audio didn't come through. Now we got Jeff's audio on Twitch. So we are streaming for a little under an hour. Hey, Matt. Good to yeah. see you again. Matt Nelson is in the chat. Uh, Kaylee's here. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I'm following you guys wherever you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now let's go back to what we were doing when the audio is failing. Hey, Jeff. Davidson. <laughs> hey, Jersey. <laughs> How's it going? Oh, it's better now. Um, so Good. I, I, I'm sorry to have to ask you to do the introduction again for where you you and I work together because we're coworkers. And yes, yeah, we're, yeah. We we teach Coach together, teachers. And we make now we're making comics together. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, yeah. So I uh I am Jeff Davidson. Uh I'm one of the uh, instructors uh at Tri Rivers Career Center, uh the interactive media group and we were fortunate enough um, last year to have Jersey come for just a quarter um, of the year and uh, teach the kids about uh, graphic novel storytelling. And and I've been a fan <clears throat> of the medium since I was a little, little kid. Um, and so uh, it was a really exciting, uh, fun thing. And I will say like Jersey really inspired me to try doing some uh, to kind of, you know, kick the, the dust off a little bit of like doing some more illustration again, because um, even though I've been doing, you know, uh, professional work for 34 years or so, um, the, uh, you know, it's it's easy to, to kind of just get into the the stuff that you're, you know, the, especially when you're getting paid to do, to do, but, you know, the illustration stuff is one of the things I've always loved. And so last year, when you kind of inspired me to get that comic going, you know, it was actually really super fun for me. And it was like one of those things that really was, was I was super proud of sort of how it turned out. And then this year said, you know, we should try modeling for the kids, like how to work, you know, collaboratively on a book. And I was super excited and, and uh, you know, so I'm, I'm super stoked about uh, sort of what we landed on with our, our first project together. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember the way I asked you was I said, uh, uh, don't, what was it? Don't, don't say yes right away. Don't feel like you have to do this thing. You super not pressured to do this because I've had my share of, of good collaborations and not good collaborations. I'm like, it's a serious thing to make that commitment. So just think about, it. you're like, yes, just let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> like it was immediate. I think you didn't even finish telling me you don't yeah. have to feel any pressure before I was like, yeah. yes, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was, that was fun. So, yeah, and then we kicked around like a handful of ideas and then we landed on this thing, which uh, the, the URL is actually, let's see, it's that way. It's that way on the screen, everybody. Yep. Yeah. Um, and it's uh, Aliens Love Dogs. Other way, this way. <laughs> yes, it's down there. Got it. <laughs> yes, AliensLoveDogs.com. And uh, I think, you know, it's... Uh, one of the things I was super excited about is like Jersey, your sensibility about like, uh, you know, working on uh, things that sort of harken back to the things that were so inspiring to us. You know what I mean? Like that, um, 
you know, that, that like, you know, watching like a Dungeons and Dragons cartoon and, um, you know, just like that, you know, going back and, and, you know, watching GI Joe or watching Transformers or, you know, uh, Battle of the Planets, you know, all these things that were just so like fun and exciting and upbeat and inspiring and really kind of like got me my love for, you know, science fiction and superheroes. And, and, you know, it's like, I, I love the way that you sort of like think about, um, you know, trying to make things accessible to kids because, you know, it's like, you know, kids can't get to the point where they can, you know, read the the higher level science fiction and, you know, read some of the stuff that's a little bit more, um, you know, uh, adult, you know, uh, that, that unless they have that starting point from, you know, when they're young, you know, and so it's actually here we are. Okay, sure. So here's my, this oh, is. Oh, do you have it? You have the Batman book? I do. I've got it. Ugh. It's okay. So this, yeah, this is, this is probably the single most influential book in my life, which is um, the Batman ABC book. And uh, you know, my wife asked me, well, how did you get into comics? And this was the book, Batman ABCs, that got me into comic books. Uh, and so, you know, that wouldn't have happened if there wasn't somebody out there making stuff for, um, you know, younger readers. So, yeah. So I love that. So yeah. I was very excited to be a part of that. That's always been important to me. And um, like, you, like you said, uh, the sensibility of the stuff we grew up on has always been fascinating to me from a creative standpoint of like working with the creative constraints of something that's meant to push another product, something that's supposed to be like, you know, um, uh, basically commercial for a toy. And I know that that right. that's like, there's something kind of sinister at the source of that idea of like, let's make an exciting adventure that makes kids uh, unable to resist our awesome products that their parents don't might not have enough money for. Um, right. But, but as a kid who enjoyed them, I remember thinking like, well, how come they're so good then? If they're just commercials, how come I like them so much? Uh, and yeah. how come I still think yeah. about them? So somebody must have been trying. And so I've spent the majority of my career or whatever you want to call it, thinking about storytelling in through that lens of that um, constraint. Um, so anyway, I was, I was glad that you were okay with going along with that idea of like, well, let's see what would happen if we made something that felt like it was of that time without being a, um, a clear imitation of it, right? You don't yeah, and to... without being a parody too. I think that's yeah. one of the things is it can so quickly fall into like, you know, the jokey joke of like, oh, I'm going to make fun of this. And it's like, you know, there's, there's something that is, you know, just so awesome about this that it's like, it doesn't, you know, you don't have to make fun of it. You can just sort of like, you know, <laughs> Be, be be more of like an you know an homage to it you know yeah yes it could also just be something that, well it's it's naming the truth with love right um oh kaylee's okay first of all rodrigo's here hey rodrigo good to see you again hi rodrigo uh, and kaylee's asking what is the name of the bird on your shoulder mr davidson <laughs> so this is chico he uh, he is a very demanding uh, bird who likes to have uh, you know his time with me. So if I neglect him too much, he gets really grumpy. So he likes to just sit on my shoulder and draw with me and hang out with me. And the only thing he doesn't like to do with me is vacuum cleaning. He's very oh. anti-vacuum for some reason. So but when when I vacuum, he just throws water at me. Rodrigo says, oh, my God, you're a pirate making comics. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little I tried it with the eye patch. It was just a little too hard to uh, yeah. to draw with. You are the Dread Pirate Roberts of the class. <laughs> the other thing I like about Chico is he always laughs at my jokes. So he'll occasionally just you'll hear him laughing over here. So. Oh, wow. So, so is that nobody else would laugh? Well, yes. I mean, well, as a dad and a teacher, you are entitled to your share of dad jokes. Right, right. Which we also uh, implemented a couple into the book, too. So <laughs> We did. That's right. So, actually, here's uh, the face of the guy. 
hearing the dad joke. <laughs> oh, actually, yeah, yeah, that's what you're inking right now. We, we'll break down like the right. whole um like workflow that we came up with together, which I'm really excited about. But I I, I want to back up real quick for the folks who are not familiar with the program that we both teach in. Is um we put together like I'm, I'm doing a year this is my very first i've been doing this 17 years this is the first time i've done an entire year residency in a school and i'm so grateful that programs like the ohio arts councils teach arts ohio uh grant program uh gives me the opportunity to be in a school for an entire year that's incredible um it is but one of the things that we put together is like a syllabus where I'm mostly focus, focusing on comics, but I'm trying to tie it into everything else that you're teaching in there. And you teach in interactive media a lot of different topics, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, you know, the I think, you know, the the thing is like kids, sometimes they hear, oh, we're going to be making a comic. I'm not, I don't want to be a comic artist. And then, you know, you start to hopefully get them to, to understand that like, well, you don't have to be a comic artist. All of these things sort of, like have, uh, you know, have similar foundations. So whether it's thinking about composition for photography or whether you're thinking about story uh, storyboarding for a short film, you know, there's so many of these things. It's really, it's about, it's about using, you know, visuals to tell a story and to get an idea across. And so that's the thing that I love is like, you know, you don't, you don't just say, well, here's how you draw a superhero. It's like you, you get the kids to think about language and you get them to think about, okay, if you're trying to, like uh, you know, draw this sound. How do you draw this sound? And you know what you know what is it that uh, what color would this be? What kind of font would it be? And and you know there's so many things that have uh, such fun overlaps. And I think it's such a create a, a creative way to like really let the kids get a little um, you know get a little bit silly and be have a little bit of fun and you know really you know some of them I think have some fairly expressive pieces too. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, I, sure. I love the fact that it's like, you know, it can connect to so many different things um, that we cover. Yeah, no, I feel pretty strongly about that, too, as like one of my sort of missions as a teaching artist. Um, people, we've got some people who have been listening to my podcast for years now and, and will probably have no trouble remembering when I was I was a pretty outspoken evangelist for comics as a medium, like how it's like it is the best reading experience available to us. I, I would say things like it is the universal language for sighted people. Um, right. And, and I mean, sure. But like nowadays, as I'm getting a little bit older, I'm mellowing out a little bit. One of the things I think about is like, I really think about, uh, I want to use comics to help people understand that we are all creative animals. Whether or not you decide to do comics for a living, whether or not you decide that it's the best thing in the entire world, that's okay. You don't, you can, you don't have to. And I say this all the time to my students. Like, you don't have to love this the way I love this. Um, it, it, it does make me feel feel alive. It gives me life energy when I do it. But I'm not going to ask anybody else to feel that. That's theirs to have. That's not mine. But if I can leverage it to make people understand that, like, oh, everybody has the ability to uh, do creative problem solving in whatever field you choose to go to, then, then I've done something special. Um, and so that's one of the things I get excited about with this, with us working together is that like, it's really fun to collaborate with you on finding ways for that overlap to happen. So it doesn't feel like, okay, we're switching to comics now, which is a completely different thing than anything else you're doing. You're using a completely different skill set, And if you're not into it, this whole next hour and a half is completely irrelevant to you. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I think, you know, it's like, I think you do a really good job of, uh, um, you know, taking, you know, your obvious passion for it. That's the other thing too, I think the kids really pick up on is that it's something that you really, you know, that you really do love. But, you know, I think it's one of those things too, where, you know, like, you know, when you look at how many, you know, big directors, you know, were so influenced by comics and, you know, it's like, I, I think, you know, there's, there's a story there to be told about, you know, that like, like you said, you know, whether it's the perfect storytelling medium or not, it, you know, it does so many things that you just can't do in any other way. And, uh, you know, sometimes just getting kids to think outside of the box of, you know, like what they think is art or, you know, filmmaking or whatever, um, and be able to realize that they can apply those 
same creative like juices towards um, other things, you know, I think mm-hmm. is, is very, uh, is very exciting. Well, and, and another thing that I like about the way you teach your courses at Tri Rivers is it really does celebrate the different modes of approach and the interdependence of those things so that you aren't just one thing, right? Like this is something I said in in jest last Wednesday, I think, where I said like, don't buy into the post-industrial educational systems view of what subject areas are. They are not bucketed into different fields. They are interdependent or something like that is what I, because. Yeah, well, and it's true. Go ahead. No, no, I, I was done there. Go. Yeah, I was just going to say it's true, too, with like so many things, like even like, you know, we're talking to them about like the the overlap of math. And, so, you know, like we're, when we teach our animation unit, like we talk about physics and we talk about all these things. It's like, you know, none of this stuff exists in a vacuum if you if you, you know, can really start to open your mind and look at it. And, you know, it's like it can, you know, I did not like math when I was <laughs> when I was a student. <laughs> you tell but, them that often. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but as an adult, it's like I just I math is just so fascinating to me, and I just love it because there's just so many ways that um, it connects up with the things that I'm trying to do, and there are so many ways that um, I can you know interject that. And the same with like science and physics and that kind of thing. That's all stuff that was like not really my forte in um, school, but mm-hmm. you know like now when I start to think about like you know follow through and overlapping action and like you know, trying to create like a feeling of like volume and mass in a, a, a you know, with something animated, um, you know, all those things are things that like have connections. And, you know, so it's like all this stuff kind of, you know, can be connected in a lot of ways. But, but the other mm-hmm. thing is I love comics. So it's like, it was really fun for me to like have, like, <laughs> <laughs> have access to comics. Well, I, and that's a big help too, because like not every residency do I get to work with somebody who a grew up around the same time as me and b really loves comics right. the way I love comics, because uh, yeah, a lot of times, it, and they mean well, but they'll say things like, "Oh, that's the kids will enjoy it because you have the fun job. It's a fun thing you have. right? How cute, how droll, you know?" And it's like, well, yeah, it is, it is, but you know, yeah. um. And I, and I honestly don't think I say 99% of the teachers I work with do not mean to be condescending. It's just, it's, it, they're, they're speaking to broader cultural stereotypes around pop culture and, and the arts and et cetera. Right. Um, Kaylee's asking us some questions and she said she's taking Uh-oh. notes on our layout. I know. It, Uh-oh. Like, yeah. Kaylee is one of our students and Kaylee's asked. Yes. Very what, dedicated student. I will say. Yes. Yes, there there are few who take the comics as seriously as Kaylee does. Um, sure. And Kaylee's actually done some color production work for me as part of my residency as well, which is really cool. Um, but she's asking, what made you choose the way you made the layout for the stream? Like, why did you put your screen in portrait and D's in landscape? Yeah, good question. Um, so w- in this case, this is a layout that I put together for when I have a guest. And when I have a guest, I want to give deference to them. They're 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 in my space, but they are a guest. So I want to accommodate them. So I'm going to give more traditional uh, privileged layout to them. And so I squeeze myself over to the side. Right. That's how I was thinking about this anyway. Uh, also, you'll notice that that Mr. Davidson's uh, frame is bigger than my frame. I gave him the bigger chair at the table, as it were. So that was part of my well, thinking here. And I think that's a, a, a great, ac- accurate representation of how uh, you are in the classroom as well. You're always willing to like, you know, like step in or step aside. And, you know, that's another thing that really made it so, uh, so nice to work with you is that, you know, I feel like that you really have a, uh, you know, that, that mind of like not trying to figure out how to put yourself in front, but instead rather, you know, how do you, how do you put, how do we put in front of the kids what needs to get in front of the kids, you know? I, I, w- I was having this conversation with a friend recently and they observed that um, that my style of collaborating is to share power and my style of teaching is to share power. And I think I was like, well, what else do you do with it? <laughs> it's like saying, yeah. like, you know, you breathe oxygen. I'm like, well, what else are you supposed to do with it? Right. But it's like, oh, that's right. That's right. Some people get really weird about power. I forgot. <laughs> yes. Very, very weird. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things that, um, you know, 
people, uh, you know, can, and, you know, even in a, even in a, an atmosphere where it's like, what you're trying to do is to make opportunities for students and they, you know, they get like lost in this. Well, you know, I'm making an opportunity for a student, but I have to make sure that everyone knows that it's me that's making this opportunity and I'm great. And that, you know, without me, this wouldn't be, you know, it's like, well, you can be great without being right in front. A, a, a less um, patient friend of mine once said about teaching artists, like, if, if you get into this job because you want to get your ego stroked by 12-year-olds, you got to get a different job. <laughs> That's the first indicator that this is the wrong job for you. Because <laughs> one, they're not going to stroke your ego. And two, no. it's like, like, well, it's really about the kids. It ain't about you. Um, right. Rodrigo, so, okay. So, uh Rodrigo's asking, what are you two crazy fellas working on right now? Now we can talk about the project a little bit. That's a great, thank yeah. you, Rodrigo. You're doing good interview technique. <laughs> yeah, Jerson and I are just talking and you're, you're actually like, okay, guys, what are you doing? <laughs> well, do you want to break it down, Jersey, or how so, do we want to? Yeah, so like we, so part of this residency, the kids were doing, um, every kid in the class is making a eight to 16 page mini comic and they are debuting them. The school is printing them for free in full color uh -huh. and like 25 copies each. And this is a lot of kids. So like that's the hats off the tri rivers for, you know, uh, stepping up to, um, prepare these kids for success. And we're going to table with the kids at free comic book day in, um, Marion, Ohio. So come out to Thunder yeah, Fury so, Comics. Um, yeah. Thunder Fury Comics was kind enough to let us, um, you know, have all of these kids showing their work, which is just amazing and uh, exciting. And, um, you know, so, uh, you know, we definitely want to make sure we give a shout out to them for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So the Ohio Arts Council, Tri Rivers uh, Career Center and Thunder Fury Comics all are making this possible for these kids. And so we as instructors, I reached out to Jeff and said at, at the beginning of the, the, the course and said like, hey, you know, it might be a good idea for us to team up on a project because Jeff is an accomplished artist as well. And uh, I said like, let's team up on a project so we can model, like to show the kids that we never ask them to do things that we don't do, right? It's one thing for me to say, yeah, I do this all the time. I got a book coming out this September, et cetera, et cetera, right? But it's another thing to like struggle along with them and let them see us trying to piece this together the same way they are. Um, and so Jeff was very kind and generous to say, yeah, I'll, I'll spend a couple months working with you on something. Uh, <laughs> and Jersey's we, underplaying. I was like, yeah, that's so great. I would love to do this. Oh. <laughs> but, uh, no, but, very excited. but then we put our heads together. So like, well, what's it going to be? And, we kicked around a couple different ideas, but we came around to this idea that um, a project I did a long time ago, uh, like how long ago, Mr. Jost? Uh, it was like 2007, that long ago, 2006. And it was called Sugary Cereals, and it was an anthology that was meant to evoke, create new stories that evoke the feeling of cartoons that aired on Saturday mornings or in afternoon animation blocks when I was a kid. And I showed some of those comics to Jeff, who's about the same age as me, and he just got it. He's like, oh, I know exactly the vibe you're going for. And I think you called me on your drive home one day. It was like a few, like a week later. And you called me on your drive home. You were like, yeah. hey, my wife and I have this name for a project that we haven't done anything with. And I'll pass the, the conch shell to you. Yeah, well, I mean, it was just one of those things where we were, we were, you know, sort of like going back and forth on, you know, what... Uh, what kind of thing, you know, what, what theme do we want or what kind of like sort of vibe are we going for? And then, yeah. Uh, so we've, my wife and I have been sitting on this thing called aliens love dogs. And it's like, Bellin's think we've tried to like play around with like some game ideas and some, you know, uh, you know, some story ideas and, you know, some comic ideas. And so it's just one of those things where she, she had a dream where this, like this name came to her. And so we've been trying to find a way to like, uh, you know, find something that we could do with it. And then when, you know, it was like, uh, it was a little while after um, Jersey had said, hey, we should work together on something that it occurred to me like, oh my gosh, this could be the the thing that we, you know, we can use Aliens Love Dogs. We didn't have any idea what it was going to be, but, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, okay, that's, we're going to build this around that, like uh, that phrase, I guess. And, uh, you know, we kicked a couple of different ideas around, but, you know, the, 
to me, like, you know, to fit into that like Saturday morning idea that we had sort of both uh, like grew up on and really vibed on. Um, it was so important to us um, that like, you know, that, uh, you know, you, you have some things that you would expect, like you'd expect there to be some, you know, some kids and there'd have to be some adventure. And, and so, uh, you know, we landed on this idea of these two twins who, uh, you know, uh, and their, their newly adopted sister, um, they're all kind of like uh, doing a dog walking service. Uh, they get sucked into an alien world um, and uh, they're trying to find these portals home. But uh, what they're finding is that everywhere they go, all these different alien planets, everybody loves the dogs. All, all aliens love dogs, but they just don't care about the kids or whatever. And so, and so, you know, just like it was one of those things where we, uh, you know, I felt like we really sort of like, I felt like this would be at home in that you know, in that Saturday morning cartoon block that, that we have talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's the premise. It's, 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 it's a little bit of the Dungeons and Dragons cartoon from the eighties. It's a little bit of Pokemon. It's, um, it's, you know, uh, it's a little bit of Herculoids. I think there's some influence in there from that. Yeah, for Uh, sure. So, and it's, yeah, just us just playing around with, uh, you know, a lot of different characters. Well, dog. Yeah, go ahead. Oh no, I was just gonna say, and then you know, Jersey was, you know, we were we were kicking around a lot of ideas, and then Jersey was like, you know, we should because we were talking about the dogs having powers, and Jersey's like, we should give these dogs like weird powers, just like things that are just like really like crazy and super visually interesting. And so yeah, I actually um yeah, we have I pull up on the screen, I yeah. can show yeah, here's Muggsy. Muggsy is a right. corgi who can turn into a giant lava corgi who can barf lava. <laughs> and, and, and somehow his 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 friend can ride on him even when he's a lava dog. <laughs> right. <laughs> and and he almost always has those like happy eyes. So it's like yes. to me it's hilarious. You got this dog that is barfing lava that always has these like super happy, like smiling eyes. That's just so funny to me. Right. And, and, and then, then, yes, Lady Anastasia Wifflebottom, who is this poodle right. here, has magnetic powers, but only when she separates into her two polar opposites, the positive and the negative poles. So, right. right. So, you got, so there's yeah. the punk rock side and the, and the lady side. Right. And then Champ, <laughs> I don't know where this came from, but like he has lightning wings. <laughs> <laughs> his, his wings made of lightning. And, and I mean, you're right. I remember the discussion we had was, is like, I, I said, whatever powers they have, we have to think toyetically and right. in, in, in like toyetic, it's like, it should be something that is like very visual in nature. It shouldn't be like, oh, they have telepathy because like, that's a cool power, but it's a hard thing to show in a visual narrative. Right. Um, you could say, okay, well they have super strength. Well, yeah. But like, how does that turn into an action feature on a character? But if you've got a a collie that you can suddenly attach light up laser wings onto, okay, kids will get it. (laughs) Yeah, that's perfect. Well, and, you know, we talked about like, you know, even the stuffed animal, like, you know, the corgi, you know, I I remember all those ones that could like, you know, like, like fold in on themselves. So like you could have the little, you know, toy corgi that looks like so whatever, and then you could pop them out and all of a sudden he's like, you know, the big lava corgi or, um, you know, yeah. So we had a lot of but, discussions uh, around that. And that yeah. goes to Rodrigo's questions. Like as a first time collaborating on the same comic, how has the process felt for us? Any headbutts collaborating can be so hard. And that's true. That's one of the reasons we wanted to model it. Um, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll give Jeff a chance to uh, drag me publicly and say, <laughs> and say what it was like to work with this old prima donna who just pr- struts around the room flipping kids papers on her hand saying you don't know how to make comics only i know how to make comics <laughs> nice try kid <laughs> no i i to me this process has been awesome i feel like you know and it is, it's one of those things where it's, it's sort of, it's sort of like a scary, dangerous thing to like, especially if it's somebody that you like, actually, you know, like this person and you're like, I enjoy this person's company. And, you know, it's like, Hey, you know, uh, this is a, a person that, uh, 
you know, I really, you know, uh, have a lot of respect for and have a lot of, you know, fun when we're around, you know, and it's like, but yeah, when you get to the point where you're like, okay, we're, we're both committing to make something, um, you know, we talk to our students all the time about that. That's like, you know, if you, if you make a commitment about doing something, then you need to do it. And so, um, you know, to, I, I've had just an, like a blast. I feel like we've, we've been very good about like whatever ideas we have. Um, you know, we, we're, you know, I feel like we both have tons of input into what we've got. Um, and that, uh, you know, like we were both very open to listening to, to and, and none of us were too precious about anything too. I think that's the thing that I, I really enjoyed is that, you know, sometimes when you're working with somebody, they're like, you know, so precious about like one thing, you know, that we have that saying that we use all the time in class, which is kill your darlings. Right. And so mm. sometimes you work with somebody who can't kill their darlings and it can be a little challenging, but, <laughs> but, you know, I, Jersey's been, you know, just absolutely just amazing, you know, a collaborator. And, and I think we came up with a, a, a process where both of us had, um, you know, enough work to do that we were both contributing. Um, you know, I think Jersey did, did the heavier lifting for, for most of it, but, uh, but I do feel like we were, we were, um, we came up with a good workflow where it's like, okay, we're, we're both, you know, pushing a lot into this and, and, um, you know, supporting each other and, and, you know, you know, rooting each other on. And, and, uh, you know, that's one of the other things I've, I've, I've loved is that like every time I'm working on something or whatever, Jersey will give me like, you know, some very real, uh, feedback about like, Hey, here's something you could try. Here's something that, you know, could make it better or worse. And, and, uh, you know, it's just, for me, it's been, it's been, a, it's been great to get back into, um, doing something that's not just like a, you know, an educational video for a robotics company it's like this has like been a really fun creative endeavor for me yeah. and so i love it and and i'm really proud of what we've come up with i think it's a really fun um uh it's a bunch of fun characters i think it's a it's a fun goofy premise that i could just you know really see like like you said that that episodic idea where it's like you know it's you know it's like uh you know, every episode of Battle of the Planets or whatever, it's like, okay, here's this thing that they have to do. And there's this the very specific, you know, uh, looking alien that they have to fight or whatever. And, you know, I just, I really have, uh, I have appreciated that and enjoyed that a lot. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so now Jersey can drag me through the mud about being like <laughs> a uh, you know, nothing goofball who doesn't uh, contribute anything, maybe. Oh, man. No, but see, this is where we were really lucky in that we had worked together before as teachers. We collaborated as teachers mm -hmm. and we saw how yeah. I would say and, and this to the uninitiated or the unpracticed, this is going to sound weird, but this is what I consider to be the moment when you know you're a wizard doing this stuff is when you look at each mm -hmm. other and you go, I don't know what's going to happen when we do this. But we're going to figure out what's going to happen when we do this and we're going to adapt to it while we do it. Right. And then like right. in the middle of it, you look at each other and go like, is this is this the way it's supposed to go? I don't know. I hope so. <laughs> you know, and then, and then at the end, you're like, oh, that went that went pretty good. It didn't go the way I expected. This happened. This happened. I don't know what that was. But overall, I think it was good. There's like a, a, a kind of. And again, I, I know I've told the story on my podcast a bunch of times, like when my mentor once told me before we went to go do a big public speaking event she said like i got no effing idea what we're going to talk about and then the curtain opened and, <laughs> and like that was that was the moment when i felt like she was kicking away my training wheels it's like yes you can prep you can prep you can prep but you're ready to g find the flow in the moment you know like use the force and so on right so mm -hmm. i felt like when we worked together in the last school year, I was like, oh yeah, this guy, like he gets that style. Like he totally, he's experienced. He, he cares a lot about the kids, um, in a way that not every teacher does. And if you don't like children, don't be a teacher, don't be an a-hole, go do something else. Please, um, please. <laughs> for the love of God. Um, <laughs> but, but, uh, so when it came to like teaming up on a comic with you, I'm like, I have a feeling that it's going to go like us going like, I don't know. Is, is it going to be like this? I don't know. Maybe, maybe let's try that. Hey, that's pretty good. Let's yeah. respond to it as we go. It'll turn into what it needs to turn into. Right. So, mm -hmm. so I, yeah. I, and I uh, didn't feel a, a whole lot of fear around it. 
Yeah, and I think that that's one of those things too, where we I think that we probably had seen enough of each other in the classroom where it's like, okay, you know, uh, I have an idea of like what this person like values and what they, um, you know, what their level of like flexibility and you know that kind of thing is, and so. Um, I think that, you know, you and I were definitely on the same page with so many of those things, which can still be scary. Like you said, it's like sometimes the people that are the closest uh, to you as far as like your your personality type or your, you know, uh, into the same things as you can be, you know, all of a sudden it's like, oh, there's something that's still not like vibing right with us working together or whatever. But I definitely did not experience that um, with... Uh, with the characters that we created in the book that we uh, worked on. So, yeah, I, I, I will admit that there, the one thing I was nervous about was like, is he going to turn to me? Cause this has happened a couple times in my life where I've collaborated with somebody and like, they turned to me about halfway through and like, Hey, this is actually kind of hard. Can you kind of do the rest <laughs> of it? And then I go, Oh no, I'm sad because like I've got more work than I thought I was going to do. And I, I feel I'm feeling like a little abandoned by my creative partner. Mm -hmm. And so I was, I did, I did wind up checking in with you a lot where it was like, you'd show me the inks like, Hey, I got the inks and I'm like, okay, is it still fun? <laughs> right. Are you, <laughs> you still did. having a good time? I hope so. <laughs> a lot of and I think there were, <laughs> there were a lot of times where I was like, oh my God, I'm having a blast. I'm just loving this. And you were like, I can tell you're kind of like, are you telling me the truth? <laughs> <laughs> I really have fun. But yeah, it's like I, I this stuff is so fun to me. I just I I just absolutely love it. I really do. So, and I do hate like I've I've also worked with people who have, you know, left me a little high and dry and and uh you know, that was definitely something that uh was important I think for both of us was that like if we we both knew that if we were going to do it you know, that we were, that we were going to do it and we were going to do our best and we were going to like put forth as much, um, you know, effort as we could and to, to make the best uh, product that we could. And, um, you know, I've been trying to make sure that I'm pulling my weight jer jerseys, you know, level of, uh, of talent and, and speed and expertise and knowledge in this, uh, you know, it's impossible for me to keep up with you, but at least I feel like I'm not not such a huge anchor around your neck that it's making it impossible for ourselves to get something done. No, we're, we, we, this thing's been coming together really fast. And yes, Kaylee's asking if this is going to be available to read on free comic book day. Yes, because we're doing, we're working alongside of you. We have to finish on mm -hmm. the same deadline you have to finish. So we will have a 16 page comic ready printed and uh, ready to give away at Thunder Fury comics on free comic book day, May 4th. 2024. I also want to give uh -huh. a shout out to this character in the book who, because I know I've got, there's some cat lovers here too. <laughs> got For sh sure. Shampoo, our little calico <laughs> who, so I don't remember where this idea came from, but the dogs and the kids can't talk to each other. Like they don't like, just like in real right. life, you can get a vibe of what the other one's feeling, but you can't speak a common language, but the cat can speak any language. It's, it's their, you know, he's their translator character. But because he's a cat, he's not, I wouldn't call him an evil character, but he's, he's a chaotic neutral <laughs> character, right? He's like, he, he's like, he's, he's like Q from Star Trek. He's like, he's like, I like to mix it up just to keep things interesting for me. So they start getting attacked by these bugs and they don't know what the bugs are. And the, the dogs are really upset by it. And then here, Luna says, hey, Shampoo, ask the dogs if they sense anything weird. He's like, oh, no, they said nothing to worry about. And then in parentheses, our <laughs> editor note, they actually said they're very nervous. <laughs> and they saw movement in the woods that definitely was not bugs. <laughs> yeah, and I love that, you know, like uh, there has to be that element of, you know, like you said, chaos. And, and he definitely is like that sort of like chaotic, um, you know, like sort of fun. And I think, you know, that the, the, the history that we kind of came up with is like, he was, he was the one who kind of like got the dogs all riled. He's like an alley cat or something, got the dogs all riled up and they pulled the kids into this like portal that was, you know, somewhere and, and they all kind of got transported together. And, uh, and, uh, but you know, yeah, he's just kind of got that little, little bit of a, of an attitude of like, you know, um, I'm just going to like, and just, I wonder what would happen if I put this button or yeah. this button. <laughs> just well, here's a on. perfect example. Like 
wait, something's not right. Shampoo, did you lie to us? And he's just cleaning his back foot. He's like, well, cats got to do something to keep things fun around here. Yeah, and that's that's what cats are like. I have three cats. I love them. I would fight polar bears for them, but that is what cats are like, right? For sure. <laughs> well, and I thought that was, that's one of the things that was really fun too, was that like, you know, I, I grew up with dogs and I have, I currently have six dogs and four cats. So, um, you know, that was one of the things Jersey said was like, it's like, I don't know, I don't have like that many dogs, you know, that I can like look back on to like, you know, come up with like, you know, names and personalities quite the same as I could with a cat. And, uh, so, uh, you know, we, um, you know, I was able to, I think, pull out some some kind of fun, uh, you know, uh, names and that kind of thing that are that were were uh, I think fitting for the characters and uh, tell a little bit of the story too. Yeah, yeah. No, you you really did take the lead on designing the dogs' personalities. Like that was that was almost all of you because I was like, yeah, I, I I feel like. I wanted somebody who had like a lot of experience with dogs to bring like an authenticity to that, that I wouldn't bring. Right. I think I would, I would probably in the time we had, I would have stuck with a lot of cliches. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it, it was a fun, you know, we, we, I think we spent like a, a day together. We went into the, to uh, Antichrist to the comic book, uh, you know, to the Billy yeah. Ireland uh, museum and like, and then we just like hung out and just like really kind of like just, talked through some of the the ideas that we had and and uh i remember going home from that meeting and calling my wife and going like i am so excited about what we're gonna be doing and what we're gonna be making <laughs> that's right we yeah we did like a, a i want to say like a two-hour session in my studio just sitting and just talking yeah. through what it could be yeah 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 and that's uh i think that you know so much of what we ended up with you know, came out of that, you know, that one like hangout session, which was, mm -hmm. you know, a ton of fun. And, uh, you know, but like, yeah, it was, it was important to me that like, you know, if I, if I committed to do this, that I was going to give it my, my best. And so I, uh, I think that, yeah, like you said, we, we've, I mean, especially cause we had like some breaks and some other things that, uh, you know, that sort of like, you know, put a couple of roadblocks up for us. We've, we've, worked really hard to to keep things moving forward all the time so yeah and then and then we split up the production work in a way that i think helped both of us not get overwhelmed by it um mm -hmm. so like what i'm doing right now is i'm i'm just painting the backgrounds uh in like in kind of a gouache style mimicking sort of the look of the night late 1970s early 1980s kind of cartoons and Jeff mm -hmm. did the characters with just cell shaded animate cell animated style shading to try to mimic that look. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, and I felt like you know that that's one of the things where like both of us having so many of the same uh, pop culture experiences growing up was like it was it was a very easy language for us to speak to each other in. And it's like okay, well, you, remember how how things looked with you know in Thunder of the Barbarian and like how the opening was in that. And it's like, you know, oh yeah, then the Herculoids and, you know, all yeah. these things that were sort of like, you know, like shorthand that we were able to go through. And I think that's also, you know, where we kind of like came up with that idea of having like, you know, the characters be very cell shaded, like a, like the character would be in a, um, in a, a, a Saturday morning cartoon. But then if you look back at those, those painted backgrounds, and it's true with Warner brothers, you know, Wiley Coyote and everything. Some of those painted backgrounds are just beautiful. And so like you're able to, you know, again, this is where Jersey's abilities, you know, uh, bring, you know, really make the project shine is that, you know, you're just, you're, you're so fast and so facile and so good with like, um, you know, creating that sort of look that, um, you know, I think it was a, a really good like combination that we, that we managed to find there. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying the way this is turning out. Um, and I'm excited about us showing it off on free comic book day. We got like three minutes left before you got to go. Oh my God. I know. Really an hour. Lisa. Just, just about, isn't that wild? That is uh, wild. The other thing that is worth noting about like uh, the job we work together is that like, I'm, I'm just so grateful for is it's a three hour lab. So like yeah. the kids in there get to spend three hours working on their stuff. Can you imagine that? 
people who are not at this school. <laughs> like that just breaks me. I'm like, man, I the thought of having art class for three hours would be oh my gosh. What I would what I would yeah. give for that. Well, I taught at a traditional high school for, for years before um, getting into career tech and, you know, just like trying to do anything in like a 45 or 50 minute period is just, you know, so difficult. And, you know, yeah, like the kids get a chance to like really explore things and, and try things and, you know, uh, try more challenging things, um, you know, that you would never have an opportunity to solve in less than a three hour lap. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Well, that's very true. Oh man. So, um, the next question I have is, is this going to be the last thing we work on together as far as comics go? Is that a question to me? <laughs> yeah. I'm guessing, you know, <laughs> no, I, you know, I, I think, you know, uh, you know, I, I would love to work on another project with you, Jersey, to be honest with you. It's it's this has really been just, you know, so much fun. And I'm I'm really proud of the of what we created. And but um yeah, I think, you know, uh I I one hundred percent would love to 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 keep working on some some new things and come up with some uh, you know, different ideas and you know, uh you know if we decide we want to try to like, um, you know, work through a, a couple more, um, uh, of these ideas a little bit further along, you know, I think that, you know, that, that would be just a, a blast for me. Yeah, me too. And I'm, I'm with you. I'm like you that I, I don't, I, I really, I, you know, it's, it's a, it's a really dangerous thing to like work with somebody that you kind of like, you know what I mean? Cause it's like, <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Yeah. They let me down. It's so much worse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, and this is something I think we said to the kids last year when we let some of them collaborate is like I said, like this, this is something that can destroy a friendship. So we're not going to do mm -hmm. this lightly. And I remember making them all sign contracts. They had to sign like yep. uh, accountability contracts to. And then when there, there was times where we actually had to pull some of the seniors into a, a little room to like have like a little counseling session because. <laughs> Say, I think high. it did a couple of friendships. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it certainly tested some. Yeah. And so, no, that's For no sure. joke. I, I, I've had too many uh, personal relationships like get jeopardized by this kind of collaboration because if you go in without any clarity in terms of what your expectations and, 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 um, and objectives are, man, mm -hmm. what, what has the expression go is like resentment is the result of unspoken need, something like that. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Well, I think, you know, that's the one, that's one of the nice things about, um, you know, having as, you know, the, the number of years of uh, industry experience that we both have is that, you know, uh, I think both of us have bit worked with people who don't pull their weight and have, um, you know, uh, have, have had, you know, those projects that are really, really hard. And I think that, um, you know, it was important to both of us to like not to not be the person who made the, the project <laughs> hard. So, um, but yeah, and you know, just like just knowing that, like you know, it, it takes years before you realize, like, wow, everything is hard. You know, what I mean, it's like if you're gonna do something that's worthwhile, it's gonna be hard to do. And you know, like knowing that you have, like, okay, well, I know I can work through it, and I know I'm, I'm, it means enough to me to like take that energy to do it then um you know it's uh i think that's something that's good that we both had going for us as far as like working together on a project that that has been a uh, a running gag in the classroom is the kids saying to us like mr droves this is hard <laughs> and like, they say it like, they're, like, they're, they're giving me a gift like i i you have been cruising through life you have never counted an <laughs> obstacle because you move so effortlessly. You must not have. Right. I'm here to tell you. I have the wisdom. I'm coming down. I got two stone tablets. It says, this is hard. I'm like, wow, thank you. <laughs> well, and it's it's interesting, too, because it's like, uh, you know, yeah, they see where you are now. They didn't see the decades of hard mm -hmm. struggle it took to be, to be able to to draw as quickly as you do and to be able to 
you know, have your understanding of the human anatomy that you do. And, you know, that like your, you know, our, you know, our ability is to like problem solve and, and, you know, uh, come up with technical solutions for things. And it's like, yeah, that stuff doesn't just happen. It's just really, I mean, it's hard. It's hard work. Oh man. But it's, it can be rewarding work too. So. No, it's the best. It's the best. It yeah. feels so good when, when you finish it. Like, and that's the thing that Kaylee will back us up on this is that holding that thing in your hand, that little book, that artifact of your expertise and your experience is like, it's so rewarding. It's awesome to have. It's like you've been in another world and you're coming back with something. I have a thing that's from this other place, this imaginal space where I existed for three, four months, right? Well, and, you know, you shepherded this thing into existence, which is kind of, you know, it's it's a, it's a sort of magical thing where, you know, it's like this thing did not exist until I worked super hard <laughs> and didn't give up. And now there's this thing, you know what I mean? There's this, and, you know, it's like you're never, it's never exactly what you thought it was going to be. And it's sort of like having kids, you know, it's like it's never exactly what you thought it was going to be. And it never works out exactly like you, you know, you maybe had it in your mind, but you know, it's like, it's kind of, it's kind of cool that there's like this, this thing you had to work really hard and now you have something really cool to show for it. All right. Well, I should let you get back to your life because you got, it's not just a bird on your shoulder. You got like a zillion animals in that house that you'd have to care for. Mm. Yes. Yeah. We've got a, a six dogs, four cats, 10 koi, a bird. I've got a, a 14 year old i've got <laughs> got a wife <laughs> you got it so all. yeah unfortunately yep 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 but i'll be getting back to this tonight when everybody's asleep so don't worry i'm not gonna i'm not i'm not done i'm not done for the day <laughs> wow but uh, uh well just, just wanted to say thank you so much jersey this was so much fun i i really enjoyed it and um you know it's uh i'm i'm hopeful that uh once we once we get our book out there uh you know and and finished we can throw some of it up onto aliensloveDogs.com for people who want to you know check some of it out and uh see what we've been making and uh uh and then uh just kind of go from there awesome yeah. yeah me too i'm excited to share it with uh the folks who enjoy my comics i think you're gonna like it so all right we'll yeah thank you again jeff uh, thank you we'll see you Jesus says bye <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Take care, man.